Hello everyone, Grimoth here with another episode of The Curse of the Creeping Coffin. I don't feel like a pretty princess today, so I'm not going to show my face. Instead, I have something equally, if not more, horrifying. Uh, something that I, uh, a screenshot that I took a few weeks ago. There, now you can all sob profusely. Moving on. So, if memory serves, uh, I, I, I checked the votes like an hour ago, so I don't know, could be wrong, and I was doing a few things today, doesn't matter. Lying to Grandma won out by a slight margin. And again, as I trust you all to do, you all employed your various sorts of reasons, you want to see death, you realize that maybe Grandma can sniff out a lie a mile away, maybe R.L. Stein doesn't want to encourage you to lie to your Grandma, all sorts of reasons. But, uh, tell you what, let's just deviate off here. We've been deviating off a few times just to explore what would happen if we took alternate paths. And they've led to deaths. I think we've done that twice, and they've led to a death each time. There was going into the closet, and then uh, refusing to give McFarling a dollar. Why'd you refuse to give me a dollar, man? Whoa. <laughs> so uh, this time, we're just going to keep deviating off. Maybe there's something interesting that's gonna happen. We'll, uh... We'll tell Grandma the truth. Page 112. You decide to tell your grandmother the truth. Wait a minute, are you kidding? You're going to tell your grandmother that her house is haunted. That the big mess in the kitchen was a ghoulish prank. That there are so many ghosts around that Mac McFarling, professional ghost hunter, wouldn't take the case. You're going to tell her all that? Oh, really? Well, just try it. Go tell your parents or your grandparents the same story. See if they believe you. <laughs> when they get done laughing, you can start reading again on page 71. And try to learn a little lesson from this. You should always try to tell the truth. But sometimes, the truth is too unbelievable to tell. Like any time ghosts are involved. That's when you have to be a little creative. You have it here, folks. R.L. Stein, the premier... I mean, like, he's a serious children-slash-young adults uh, author. Um, of course, you know, your premier horror story not writer for uh, young kids. And, uh... Oh, he encourages you to try to tell the truth. There are some times where the truth just simply can't be told. And in that case, white lies are all right. Parents let their children read this rubbish? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> but again, parents let their children listen to me anyway, so... Eh, your mileage may vary. So, let's go make up a story. That's not a death. That's actually, I gave you guys a non-decision. It didn't matter what you picked, we'd be making up a story anyway. Surprise! So, you didn't lose. If you decided that you wanted to tell Grandma the truth anyway... Consider this to have been the game book ridiculing you. So, you've been ridiculed. How does that make you feel? On a scale from one to pissed off, with one being not pissed off, and pissed off being pissed off. Where would you rate this experience? Personally, 1.3 fuck you. Moving on. Uh, I was trying to make dinner for you, Grandma, you say. If you told the truth, she'd think you were lying. Then you'd be in even bigger trouble. Well... Your grandmother's face begins to soften. Then John Luckmeyer floats over to you. Before you realize what he's doing, John picks up one of your grandmother's best china teacups. He knocks it to the floor, right by your hand. The teacup lands with a horrible crash. Oh no! You start to open your mouth to explain, but then another ghost appears on the other side of you. This one is a girl. She's wearing an old-fashioned long white linen dress. Her hair is braided and the braids are wrapped around her head three times. Her skirt is four inches. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I thought about trying to blend in some other awkward sounding descriptions there to make it seem like, wait a second, what kind of book are we reading? But there's not a whole lot I can do with Ghost Girl. It's... I mean, if she were a woman, like Elvira, <laughs> this is the point where I'm doing that face right now <laughs> that some of you called, where you didn't know how to describe it, it was just like, <laughs> 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 uh, 
Hello, she says with a snicker. Uh, oh, excuse me, I need to do a feminine voice. <clears throat> now, do I want to have this a cultured feminine voice? Or what? Hello? Yes? <laughs> really? That's my cultured feminine voice there? Hello? <laughs> Top of the morning, Tate. No, 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 that doesn't work. Read your patriotic prose today, Z Kyle. That's, again, in reference to a, uh, <laughs> a stupid game. Um. <laughs> Hi! What's your name? I'm Ford. No. <laughs> what the hell? Use that voice. Hello! She says with a snicker. I'm Jane Luckmire. Great, you think. Another one. Trapped between the Luckmire twins. She picks up the china saucer that goes with the teacup John just smashed. Then she tosses it like a frisbee across the room. Somehow, she makes it look as if you threw it. The saucer crash lands at your grandmother's feet. Ghosts have magical powers. Suspend your disbelief. Let's move on. That's it, your grandmother says. Go to your room. Turn to page 124. Yes, ma'am. You hurry into the hall and start up the stairs toward your room, but something stops you. A terrible chill in the air. A cold so cold, you feel as if it would freeze your blood and bones. An instant later, thirteen howling ghosts appear. They float out of the walls and come towards you. They are all shapes and sizes, but they have one thing in common. They are all terrifying. No, you want to cry. This can't be happening. Your knees shake so much, you almost fall down. But somehow, you manage to run. Ghostly arms reach for you as you race out the front door, into the front yard where the sky is growing dark. For the next ten minutes you huddle under a big tree, trying to think. Mostly you just think one thing, get me out of here. But you know you can't go home. Your parents are away on vacation. Besides, you can't leave your grandmother here all alone. Not with those creeping coffins. Which means you've got to go back into that house. You've got to get rid of the ghosts. And you've got to find the Keeper of the Sword before it's too late. Using the back door, you quietly slip into the house. Then you sneak up the back staircase to the second floor. You peek around the corner carefully. You don't want to run into the Luckmires. When you are sure the coast is clear, you start up the stairs toward the attic. As soon as you step into the stairway, you see a huge soldier standing at the top of the third floor landing. His uniform is old-fashioned. Civil War, you guess, and judging from the medals pinned to his gray jacket, this guy knows what he's doing. And what he's doing right now is pulling a, sh a sword from its holder. The sword is about five feet long. The handle is mother of pearl, encrusted with sapphires. The blade gleams. Even in the darkness, you can see that it's dangerously sharp. The enormous soldier points the sword at your heart, do not advance one more step unless you are willing to die, he booms. You can't take your eyes off the sword. The longer you stare at it, the more your legs shake. And it dawns on you, this soldier must be the keeper of the sword. So what are you going to do? Run and hide? <laughs> Definitely. Trembling in fear, you start to back up. That's when you feel a sharp point sticking you in the back. Right between your shoulder blades. Ouch! You cry, turning around. Big trouble. Behind you is another ghost. And this one's dressed in a fencing costume. White canvas pants. A wire mesh mask. Leather gloves. On God! The new ghost says. The voice echoes all around you. From the voice, you know that this ghost is the most manliest pirate woman you have ever heard to sail the Spanish main. 
Just kidding. <laughs> you know that this ghost is a woman. <laughs> but she could have been. With a voice like, On God! Then you realize something. She has a sword, too. Two ghosts. Two swords. Both dangerous. But only one has the sword you need. <laughs> Which one? If you think the fencer is the keeper of the sword, turn to page 99. If you think it's the soldier, turn to page 118. Alright, folks. Fencer, Civil War soldier. Do we have any clues to determine this one? Should we just do bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish? How many people know? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, I used to do that for multiple choice questions on tests sometimes, even in college. <laughs> Always a good sign when you're doing bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish on the multiple choice questions. Ah, uh, fuck. Here I am at the chemistry test. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. <laughs> and then I would determine how many pieces of bubble gum are in the dish by counting how many letters there were in the actual answer. Like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh... I'm never good at multiple choice. Probably because my, luck's, my luck attribute is so damn low. Anyway, there are your choices, folks. Let me know. We'll have a decision time soon.